everyone, and welcome to today's session on no money, no problem, how to start a business with what you have. My name is Paula, and I work for Teach Man to Fish. And hopefully today we also have here my colleagues, Sinat and Nonto, who are joining from our South Africa office. They'll be supporting me today, answering your questions in the chat and helping out with the activities later on in the breakout rooms. So Teach Man to Fish is an educational charity based in the United Kingdom, whose mission is to empower young people with the skills they need to succeed in school, in work, and in life. For those of you who are not familiar with the work that we do, I want to start by playing a short video to introduce you to our flagship program, the School Enterprise Challenge. So please bear with me as I share. The video and please let me know if you can hear the sound. Jerome's story is pretty typical. He comes from a shanty town, Nakawunda, on the outskirts of Kampala. Poverty is the norm, it's a daily struggle to make ends meet. Good jobs are few, and few have the skills for the jobs that do exist. Even for kids lucky enough to go to school, it's very hard for them to break out of this with purely an academic education. Teach Man to Fish is an educational charity working in developing countries to give children a chance to acquire the skills needed to succeed in work and life. So although we're based in London, we work with schools in 110 countries, working both directly and through partners who are able to provide more on the ground support. Our flagship program is the School Enterprise Challenge. It guides school teams through the process of researching, planning and setting up a real school business selling real products to real customers and earning real income. One of the main benefits will be the development of 21st century skills, or what we call soft skills, and that will include teamwork, communication, leadership, and business skills. The impact we have, I guess, even in terms of developing skills, equipping the students and the teachers as well, we usually say this is a learning experience for the teachers as well. Not necessarily teachers will know how to set up a business or know about businesses in general. So I guess it's in terms of a skills gain, how they can actually put them in practice. It's not about theory, it's about going and doing and actually learning while doing it. Alongside the skills being learned, there's also the dimension that the school generates income. That income both sustains the business so that students can take part year after year, but also plays an important role in generating funds that the school can use to support the most disadvantaged students, to buy additional resources, or to support their educational priorities. Some of the businesses set up by the school, we range from a pottery business in India, handicrafts, um, fish farming in Uganda, vegetable farming, healthy snacks in Mexico, a tax shop in Ecuador. I'm Monica Sharon, the super. Great, so some of you might be familiar already with this video because it's, um, it's one that we usually share on our webinars. So let me come back to my presentation so we can continue going as we plan to. And there we are. So as you saw in the video, our program, the School Enterprise Challenge, gives young people the chance to become entrepreneurs whilst still at school. So participants in the program get to plan, set up, and run a real business, selling real products to real people. And in the process, of course, they learn about businesses, but they also develop a wide range of skills, such as communication, teamwork, problem solving and leadership. So today we will share with you different creative ways in which you and your students can start their businesses with little or no money. That said, like with what you have available. So you will also get the opportunity to hear firsthand from one of our inspiring teachers from South, Af from South Africa, sorry, 
he has led the students through the program, setting up the school businesses with what they have available. As we usually do on every webinar, we really want to make the most of our time together today and for you to get as much as you can out of today's session. So your participation in the group activities in bar and via the chat box will make all the difference. So we really encourage you to be actively involved and present in the moment. So having said that, we started already introducing ourselves. It'd be great to know you a little bit better for this hour and a half that we have together. So if you'd like to continue doing that in the chat, I know some of you uh, already introduced yourselves. So for you, I'm going to go with that other question. How I, what are you hoping to get out of today's session? What are you expecting to get out of today's session where we're going to be sharing these examples and starting with what you have available? I'm going to allow a few seconds for you to share in the chat. As I said before, we have people joining from South Africa, Sri Lanka, India, Australia so far. So please do share in the chat your name and where you are joining from if you haven't already. And if you already introduce yourself, if you'd like to share, what are you expecting to get? Or what are you hoping to get out of today's session? Antonio shares knowledge on the topic, worldwide perspective. Amazing, thank you, Antonio. You might have noticed today, I have my colleagues from South Africa who apparently are struggling to connect and not my usual co-host, India. So please do bear with me. If I'm, I'm sure you can see my screen still. And, and if not, please do let me know. Um, while running all the, all the controls in, in Zoom is not always easy. We have Avna joining from United Arab Emirates. That's amazing. Thank you for joining. So while you think about what you are expecting to get out of today's webinar, let's have a look at what we are going to be covering today. So I said we'll have together up to an hour and a half. And the idea is to share with you some examples of how schools around the world set up businesses with what was available to them, managing to keep the cost really low and making a bigger profit. And we'd also like to share a first-hand experience from one exciting guest speaker today who will be joining us, and that's Mrs. Cynthia from South Africa and she has plenty of experience guiding her students through the School Business Challenge program and supporting them to come up with a great business idea, plan a set up a successful school business with little or no money. So she's going to be sharing with us all that experience. And as we did on previous webinars, while Cynthia shares her story, we encourage you to join in the discussion by sharing your comments or any questions you might have in the chat. This is a golden opportunity for you to get your questions answered by this expert teacher facilitator who already, he's already running businesses with her students. So again, this is a one opportunity, a golden opportunity for you to get your questions answered. Hopefully my colleague Sinat or Nonto will select a few questions from the audience which you are welcome, as I said before, to type in the chat. And then we'll have a few minutes to, to share those questions and to learn more from what Cynthia is going to be sharing. So for now, all I'll ask you is to please uh, stay on mute. Uh, that's because we have a number of people in the room at the moment, and it's just to avoid any background noise. Remember, we like to make these sessions as interactive as we can. So you're always welcome to share thoughts, insights in the chat, and you can always raise your hand if there's anything that you'd like to share live. So we can ask you to unmute and turn on your video if you like to and share it live with us. Amazing. So that's mainly it in terms of uh, ground rules. As we usually do on every webinar, at the end of the webinar, we are going to be sharing a link to a survey. And when you complete the survey, you'll be able to download your certificate of attendance. And the same will go with this presentation slides and a few resources that
I will share after the webinar. Having said that, let me uh, check the chat. Fines is adding getting more knowledge on the topic and share experiences. And Christoph, which I'm guessing is seen at, is asking for everyone to post your questions in the chat. Amazing. So let's get started then. So I wanted to start today by introducing you to a keyword that will guide us throughout today's sessions. And that, that is for me, startup capital. So we said at the beginning, we are going to be sharing examples today. Uh, we are going to have Cynthia sharing her experience, but somehow this word, the startup capital needs to be uh, needs to be clear from the beginning, right? So you might be wondering probably what is the startup capital? Because we mentioned that before, it's going to be a thread on today's session. So let's, let's have a look at what we mean by startup capital. And mainly a startup capital is the money needed to set up a new business. And it's also, or might also be known as seed capital. So there are a lot of creative ways to raise the startup capital you need to launch your business. And we think it's also actually a fantastic opportunity for students to gain skills in fundraising, right? Which as well as generating funds can help market your future business by attracting potential customers. So it's a two way exercise fundraising, not only to raise funds, but also market your future business by attracting potential customers. So we're going to have a look together on some of these creative ways in which you and your students could generate a startup capital. So there are plenty, right? And we usually go with, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but we like these categories that we came up with and we share with you in the School Enterprise Challenge, um, just to organize all those ideas in terms of what you could do to start a school business with what you have available or little or no money. So those three main categories that we'll cover today together are getting investment, organizing events, and buying and selling products. So I'm going to quickly probably go through some ideas on each of them to give you a sense of what we mean by this. As I said before, remember you can pose questions in the chat or you can add comments in the chat. And I know some of you are already taking part or have been taking part in the School Enterprise Challenge for many years already. So anything you like to share from your experience in the chat, you know it's always welcome. So let's have a look at the first one, getting investment. So investment basically is when you put money into a business for profit, right? So for example, a group of 10 students could be investing $5 each to start the business. And if the business, that's $50, right? And if the business makes um, $100, that's an extra $5 profit for each student, right? So 10 students adding or giving as an investment $5, that will be 50. If the business makes 100, then there will be an extra $5 dollars for profit for a student, per student. So this is a great way to raise a startup capital if you can afford this, right? And even if the schools are shut, it's a quick and efficient way. So let's have a look at different examples of how you could do this, how you could get in, be getting this investment. You can ask your school management for a loan or actually to buy shares in your business. And to make it simpler, because we don't want to complicate things in terms of financial concepts and terminology, shares are a small part of your business, right? So you could be asking your school management for a loan or to buy shares. This is a small portion, small part of your business. You could also be asking local businesses for sponsorship. You can promote their brand within your school community and in exchange, and they can give you or they can offer you in kind of financial support. And this way, by supporting you, they can actually get more customers. And even so, if they're related, is a business related to stationery or bookshops or things linked to your school. 
So that's asking local businesses for sponsorship. Another way in which you could do this is ask teachers, parents, or fellow students to, know they, to donate sorry, money to the business. Or you could ask teachers, parents, or fellow students to donate items to the business to get it started, right? It doesn't need to be about money. It could be a small amount of money, or it could be any item to get it started. For example, if it's a mask business, which I'm sure many of you might be still running, um, you, can, you could be asking people to donate a spare fabric uh, to help you start up with low cost and maximize your profit. And another way that we said before in terms of share, you can sell them. You can sell them to teachers, to parents or fellow students. So they have the opportunity to earn back their investment later when your business starts making a profit, right? Buying shares is like a small portion of a business, it's an investment. When the business starts making profit, then you get that money back to you. And here we have an example from a school in Mauritius, and that's Dropnap Rahul College, and they source the materials for the fashion products for free. How did they do that? Well, they just ask the community to donate their old shins, right? So this way, again, the startup costs were kept low and gave the students a unique marketing strategy as creating goods from recycled materials made the price of their products more competitive, right? Remember that we covered this before when we, when we went through finances together. The lower your cost, the bigger your income, the, the more you maximize your profits. And at the same time, you're helping the environment, right? By reusing products, recycling products that are no longer needed, and you, you give them a new life, you're actually helping the environment at the same time. So that's the first category in terms of getting investment. Let's have a look at the second one. And the second one was about organizing events. So let's bounce some ideas together, some things that you could do to organize an event. You could, for example, host a school fair, put on a play or music events or a sport day and sell entry tickets. That could be as easy as it sounds, charge a small fee, and that could be, start, that could be part of your startup capital. And you can even re raise more money by also selling food and drinks, organizing a raffle, right? There are so many activities that you can run and raise money from on any of these kind of events. Another thing that, uh, this is one of my favorites because I actually have seen it in one of the schools in Central America. Another way in which you can organize an event is by running a cinema evening at school or even a school disco, right? Yeah, so you can put up this event, charge a small fee as an entry fee, play the movie, you all have a great time. And at the same time, you're raising funds to get started with your school business. Another option could be putting on a fundraising at parent-teacher evening. And I know this is pretty popular in India. So you can sell food and drinks to greet the parents and even organize a raffle. Again, events where people gather together, which I know it might be challenging with COVID, majority of these ones today can actually be brought to the online world. So there are many opportunities in which you can start, again, charging a small fee and raising some startup capital. Another thing you could do is take part in challenges such as marathons or other sports events and ask people to sponsor you. And that I would say is pretty popular in Europe, right? Running a marathon or running a race and being sponsored by a charity or any other organization and you raise funds on their behalf. Another thing in the online world that we were saying before, or mentioning before, it's about holding an online quiz night among your friends and charge a fee for participating. Or you can also organize online subject fairs, for example, related, related sorry, to history or science, with different groups participate, participating in different games. Teachers and students could also tutor online or in person or host 
online language session, lessons, for example. And another one is a car wash, right? That's a pretty popular one, not necessarily as a school business, but you can hold a car wash at school for parents, teachers, and the local community or just for family if the schools are shut. And there's also opportunities in the online world with gaming tournaments and uh, charging participants for a small fee for entering and taking part. So one example that we have here is from the Galaxy School Wadi in India who raised their startup capital for the candle business during a school festival. So they organize a few games and charge a small amount um, a small fee for people to play, right? And as the game require little investment to organize, the majority of the games were brought by the same students, their profits were maximized. So this is the second one, organizing an event. Let me quickly have a look at the chat. If there's anything that I'm missing. Amazing, thank you. Let me just, I can see, Sinat prompting every one of you um, to share your experience as well. If there's any, again, I'm sure most of you went through this already. So you're welcome to share in the chat if any of these resonate with you, you did it already. And if so, how that went for you. Okay. Paula? Yes. Atasi Sarkar said something really interesting about some eco-friendly business ideas, which are pocket-friendly too. And I think that's that's a good idea. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you, Sina. Definitely. Everything you'll see, the majority of examples today are about what we have available and how we can recycle things and again, give them another life, which at the same time is helping the environment, which is a win-win, something that we encourage you to consider as well. Great, so I'm going to move on to the third one, which was all about selling, buying and selling products, right? So again, keeping our uh, startup cost low and being a smart way or creative way um, to start with our business. So let's have a look at what we could do. So for example, we could sell clothes made out of recycled materials, right? And this could be done either online or in person at school. We can also make and sell items, for example, pens, again, online or in person. We can, we can start with something small, just to raise funds to go to, to, to have enough startup capital to kick start our business, like a bigger one in a way. So one way to do that could be by selling or making pens, for example. We could also be using a spare fabric or rope to make bags, and then we can sell them either at school or in local markets as an alternative to plastic bags, right? And I think this is relevant to all the countries our audience are coming from today, right? So plastic bag is no longer in use. We don't want them any longer. So anything that is related to fabrics of clothes and, um, and making bags is welcome as well as a business. And then you could also sell products that grow on a school grounds. And I'm going to share shortly an example on that. For example, any fruit in local markets. I remember many years ago being in a school also, I don't remember which country I was visiting a school and they have a mango tree at the back. So you could be selling mango jam or you could be selling mangoes, right? Anything that grows on school grounds. Um, I mentioned face masks masks already, that's another easy way to start raising money. And another one is holding a boot fair, right? So it's time, you might be in the, in the trend that we need to declutter, right? Our wardrobes or homes and bring any items that you don't use anymore to sell to your community. That's a perfect way of raising a startup capital. So you can bring items from home uh, to sell or even ask other students, other fellow teachers, or even parents to help donate items and then sell them, right? So here the example is the school from Nigeria, and this is community secondary school, Amansea, and they needed to start a capital to start with the beauty and cleaning products enterprise. So what they did is they sold pine nuts kernels 
that grow naturally in the school ground to villages who then sell them in the local market, right? Wholesale, and then the villagers went and, and sold it in the local market. That's another way to, to, as a creative way to think about what you have available and how you could get started. And I can see the chat finds that you can also host an expo exhibition and you can charge fees for stolen. Exactly. That's a really good idea as well. Exactly. You can set it up and you can charge a small fee for stalls so other vendors can come and join you. Um, and then you get some funds for your startup capital. Great. So let me share with you two more examples linked to what we just introduced so far in terms of getting investment. And that includes donations uh, of items or little money. And then we look at um, buying and selling things and then organizing events. So before we move on to our speaker today, let's have a look at two more examples of schools who set up things with what they have available to them, set up businesses with what's available um, to them. So the first one comes from Alcon International School India. And again, if any of the teachers is from that school is here today, you're welcome to raise your hand or type in the chat about this experience. This is a school business that is selling candles, cakes, and other customized products. And they managed to keep the direct and indirect costs low, meaning that they were able to fully maximize their profit. Why do we think this is a good example? mainly because it shows how important it is to be able to adapt your business, right? Especially in these times. So the, although the school initially started with only selling candles and cakes, they had to adapt their business when the pandemic came around, as probably many of you had to. And as two entrepreneurs, they made it happen. So the costs were kept low, um, by using reusable products despite the sudden changes, unexpected one, and they were therefore able to make huge profits. So the business mainly specializes in reusable products. So this is not only, as we said before, help in terms of cost, but also the environment too. Let me um, just help you meet some of you so we don't have... Um, any background noise. Amazing. So this is one example in terms of adapting and keeping your low, your cost, sorry, low. Let's have a look at another example. And this one comes from Serbia. As you might see in the screen, it's a pretty difficult name of a school to pronounce. So let's go with it. Ekonomsko Kovinska Skola in Serbia. So it's a school business producing baskets from recycled material. And that's mainly paper and newspapers and natural materials. So why do we think this is another good example? Mainly because they almost made three times the value of costs in profit as they use available materials like newspapers and equipment, scissors, sticks, glue, owned by the school to reduce the initial cost. So this for us exemplifies the resourcefulness, which is really important when conducting a successful business. And as well as this, it also shows creativity and initiative, which we believe are also essential when you come up with ideas on how to raise your startup capital. Great, so those were two more examples linked to the categories that we covered before. So it's time now to move on to our first speaker today. And that's Mrs. Cynthia Matewa from Sitokosisi High School. And again, remember that I'm really bad at names, right? So please bear with me. Do we have Cynthia with us today? Sina Nanto, do we have Cynthia? Yes, we do. Yes. yes. Amazing. Hi, Cynthia. I'm not sure if your internet connection will allow your camera to be on. If not, don't worry. And we can just, um, 
Yeah, there we are. There we are. Amazing. Thank you, Cynthia, for joining us today. So I'm going to ask you just a few questions which we spoke about before the session today. So you can share with your audience, with our audience today, your experience setting up businesses with what you have available with your students. How would that sound to you? No, it sounds good. Amazing. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. So if you'd like to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and the group of students you work with. Okay. Um, evening, everyone. My name is Cynthia Mteto from the Tobazese High School in South Africa. All right, uh, my, my school is a, is a school that is in a rural place. So we've got uh, learners who are, who are aging from the age 13 to 19. And then we came about with a group where we were working with grade 10s to grade 12 when we started. And then now gradually we introduced grade eight and grade nine because they also do EMS, which, which also forms part of this uh, entrepreneurship. Amazing, thank you, Cynthia. And if you can share a little bit um, about your business, what's your school business about? How did you decide on that idea? And how did you went about raising any startup capital if you needed to, to actually kickstart your business? All right, so our business, uh, we, we started with a tech shop. The reason why we've got this uh, shop is that we, we, were, we used it a resource analysis form where we identified resources that we have already in our school. And then we identified that there is a vacant uh, shop that is not used. Then we decided that we can start up by, by using it, which was easier and cheaper for us because we did not need to pay rent. And then at that time, we did not even have money. So we came together, then we sit with a group of learners. It was 13 learners at that time. And then we started thinking of ideas on how we're going to raise capital. So we collected papers. We used the, the previous uh, exam paper, question papers and also answer sheets that were no longer in use. We collected them. We collected the old books that are not used and then we, we sold them in the recycle. Uh, recycling business and then after that the money we got there we came back and then we said okay since it's not enough money we need to continue and come up with another idea of which it was us thinking that we can just have a competition well if I can just share a background of my school my school was not performing well uh, in results so we thought of ways but what is it that we can do as, as a school so that you can also assist in the percentage of the school, then we thought of a spelling bee competition because we see we saw that learners were struggling with English, and then we said, let us have a competition, some sort of a play that is going to assist them to practice the weights or the English weights. So, in that, we we requested each grade to contribute 150 as a joining fee, and then the winner will take 500 rand. Then. We, we, we hosted it uh, and then we had that. Then all the money we got from there, we then said, okay, what we can do also as a team, we can contribute 20 rand each so that we can also add. Then we ended up having a, a lot of money, which is plus or minus 2000 rand, which we then said, okay, let us start, a, let us have a market day first before we start the tech shop so that we can identify what product the learners like the most. Then we bought several uh, different of a variety of products. We sold them on the market day and then we identified the products that will work for us. Then that's how we open our tech shop after that. Amazing. Thank you, yeah. Cynthia. That's amazing. I was trying to recall on because I think you share three different ways, right? Because the yes. first one was selling used paper as recycling, yeah. right? So that was the first yeah. way of collecting startup capital. Then mm -hmm. you run the spelling bee competition. Yes. And then you you ask also for donations, like uh, you all with the students put some money in, a little money, just to contribute yeah. to the pot and make it bigger to be able to go and buy the stuff that you needed to start selling, yeah. which is amazing. Thank you. I, I, lo I love the combination, right? That's why I was re- <laughs> Capping on the three different ways. And how did that work out in the end? You run the business, you started, and 
how has been going so far? So before the pandemic, started, probably. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it set us back a lot. So we started the tech shop, which ran, at first it was not running smoothly because because of the lack of experience, you'll find that uh, learners cannot account on, on the money made on the day and the products that they sold. Sometimes they will sell to people, not even, or, or giving extra uh, change. You saw, see those challenges that we faced. But uh, gradually they got used to the idea and we also reduced the number of people who will operate on a daily basis. And then we were able to, uh, to get money. And then when COVID and the lockdowns came, then that was a challenge because now the learners will come in groups. So it did not perform well. We ended up closing the talk shop site. But what was good is that as we joined and we were working on the tech shop, we were able to start other businesses. So while the tech shop was not now being successful and being able to work, we were able to start a t-shirt business, which is what we are running today. And it's what is successful because we sell t-shirts to the school and we design for other primary schools and high schools nearby. So it, it's what is it working right now uh, for us. That's and then amazing. what also, sorry? Yeah, sorry. Now you can continue. No, 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 go on, go on. I didn't want to interrupt, sorry. <laughs> right. So what was also good is that when we were busy doing these businesses, we were able to enter the competition for the school enterprise challenge. And I can say we've won severally, which assisted the school a lot because our school is an office school. So it gets a little grant from government. So sometimes you'll find there are no electricity money to cover electricity and stuff. So now we were able to contribute successfully to the school and also assisting those learners who are coming from, uh, who are struggling or coming from disadvantaged uh, backgrounds. And then we buy uniform, we buy shoes and jerseys if it's winter. So it assisted us a lot, I can say. Wow, that's amazing, Cynthia. So thank you so much for sharing. I think it's, um, listening to you so inspiring and thinking about what you said right like the COVID hit you needed you couldn't continue running the tech shop but that didn't mean giving up right like by then you already have set up another business which is still running successfully and that is amazing mm -hmm. that I think that shows resilience and it's inspiring right it doesn't mean like everything is lost but there are other opportunities in which you can continue the learning with your students. I understand that challenge in terms of counting money and, and the more you practice probably, right? The more they learn, the more your students uh, and, and you as a team learn how to deal with the money and, and what best practice to follow. And what would you say is your proudest moment so far with all this experience that you are sharing today? Well, my proud, proudest moment is that one, I, I, I'm a business artist teacher. So my subject was, the learners were struggling with it, if I could say. We used to get low percentages, like maybe 40%, 30%. Because sometimes I was telling them of something that they don't even know or don't even understand. So what I'm proud of is that today, I, I can safely say it's doing well because we, I even get 100% and I get good percentages because now they've practiced and they know what is it that we are talking about in class. And then number two, what is also a proudest moment is that two of my learners have started their own, own businesses at home. The other one is running a garden, which is selling vegetables to the community. And the other one is running, a, I can just say it's a tech shop a, a, like as much as it's where it's, it works like a fast food a business because it's able to make food and then provide for, for her family because her family was also struggling. So as much as she's studying, but part time she manages the business, of which is a good thing that has happened wow. or is an outcome of what we've been doing. Definitely, definitely, such a good thing. That's amazing. That's amazing, and we love. A teachment of which we love hearing that those stories where learners actually get to set up their own businesses as well once they they finish with their experience with their peers and, and working as a team and they carry on 
uh, as entrepreneurs, right? As young entrepreneurs, that's amazing. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to open up to everyone else in the audience today. Let me have a look at the chat. Um, I can see Sinat um, prompting people. Um, so let's let's move on to the Q and A. A short Q and A in case somebody would like to ask anything else or anything that Cynthia has mentioned and you'd like to learn more of or something that hasn't been mentioned and you are interested in learning from Cynthia, we just wanted to give the space and a few minutes on today's session for you to have a chance to do that. So Cynthia, if you can bear with me, I'm going to check with Sina. Do we have any questions? Is anyone um, wanted to come live and unmute themselves and ask them, ask a question to Cynthia? Anything Paula, there aren't, there aren't any questions in the chat as yet. I'm sure people are, are still trying to unmute themselves, but maybe what we could ask Ms. Matetwa just as a, as a starting point is, how did she manage to maintain the kind of momentum that she did, especially during COVID to switch businesses? How does she manage to maintain that energy? Um, you see the energy in her presentation and her discussion, Ms. Ntetwa, can you share some of your magic in terms of your momentum, please? Okay, what I can say is that maybe uh, basically it's just the love of subjects and also the love of entrepreneurship. And then also being able to also overcome challenges. Because as much as I can say uh, that, uh, you know, this COVID and lockdown things, it is depressing. But now when we use uh, our time and with learning, the learners will see and we talk about the business somehow, some way, the hope does come back for, from them and also it assists us to work and be able to push better. That's what I can say. That's amazing. I wish that we could teach love. That's really awesome. <laughs> If I may ask another question, please. Of course. Um, do, you, do you think um, it's easier to work with schools because you are literally showing them the money? And so the school becomes a very firm partner because they can see the benefit of the work that you're doing. Mm, can I please repeat the question? Oh, sure. So, um, I was wondering if, you know, sometimes um, you obviously need the support of your principal and the school so that your program works. Do you think it's easier to work with your school because they see the benefit and because you've literally shown the school the money? Do you think that that um, plays a factor in terms of how the school supports you and how the school supports the businesses? Well, I, I don't want to lie. At first, they, could, they did not believe in it. And it was difficult because they were saying, I'm taking kids out of what they're supposed to be doing, uh, which is learning, of course. But then everything was on and they saw that you see, even the results of the schools are changing. And this initiative is also being able to, to assist the school. And I'm able to show, because we also keep record, the financial record, because I think that is what is important for the time maybe they will think you wanna use the money for, for yourself or whatever reason. So now when they saw that I can be able to keep the financial record and show them how the money is generated and how the money is used, now I can safely say it's easy to work with them. But at first it was a challenge because they could not believe in it. Thank you for that um, answer, Ms. Ntetwa. Faiza has another question, slightly tied into the one that, that was just previously asked, but she was asking, how did you manage to keep the students focused? As some students at certain times feel like quitting when they are faced with challenges. Well, maybe what I can say on that note is that what I think is that as we are learning in business studies, there are also sections that will talk about the challenges and also the problem solving, or that how do you face the challenges that 
may come about in business because not everything is always uh, shiny or glory. So at some point you face the challenge. Then, yes, I don't want to lie. Uh, some were, were depressed and they don't want to participate because now they feel uh, or everything that is happen, uh, happening around was getting into them. But as I sit them down and then I remind them that, you know, we've been doing business studies and there's these techniques of problem solving, which means at some point we'll face the challenges. So that's why we need to face them and be able to come up with strategies on how to, to work on them. And then at some point we'll even play games. And then in those games, we are able to generate the, the strategies on how we are going to, to solve the problem we are facing. Thank you. It's amazing. It's that practical approach, right? Like it's not only explaining how to solve problems, but actually go on solving them, right? Which is amazing. It is a down to earth uh, practice in a way. Um, great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um, Sinat, if, if you are okay, if there are no further questions, maybe we can move on, taking a few more examples together uh, without. Um, saying, or I wouldn't move on without saying uh, thank you once again, Cynthia. That was amazing and truly inspiring, at least for me. I hope it was the same for the rest of the audience. And yeah, keep up with the fantastic work. Uh, we look forward to staying in touch and continue seeing growing uh, with your team of students. So thank you very much. Okay. So another example that we wanted to share with you today in terms of how you can get started with what you have available or little or no money at all comes from Cameroon. And this time, this is a Center for Sustainable Development and Action. And it's linked to the category that we covered at the beginning on buying and selling products and asking for donations and getting investment. It's a combination of all of them. Um, so they are the founders of this Eco Literacy Business Center, which provided a range of services and proved to be very profitable. So this school business was able to maintain lower costs and therefore able to make higher profits. And they are around on the thousand dollars range. So what they did is the students used materials they brought from home and recycled materials to minimize costs. And as well as this, they were able to gain contributions from their local communities, which shows in a way great teamwork and again, creativity and initiative. So we think this is a really good example, especially because there are, they're offering a variety of services, meaning that the likelihood of more startup was needed, right? So let me just read from their annual report, how they explain the way they went through to raise some startup capital or the money that they needed. They said, we started with the nursing of trees because it demanded less money. We involved the children who brought manure from their homes, gather empty beer cans from waste, dress them, fill them with soil mixed with manure, pick, gather and select the seeds from their homes and from the forest. The selling of the trees, as soon as they are mature for planting, will generate funds for other expenditures, right? So they started with this nursing tree. Then they also wrote letters of appeal to solicit for funds from parents, elites, friends, and businessmen who came to our aid. And again, I'm reading here an extract from the annual report. They equally wrote a project, oh, sorry, and presented I um, presented it to an organization that funds children activities and the project was published on the Facebook group, on the Facebook page, on the website, on the WhatsApp platforms to let everyone knows who follow them and the world, they say, about what the children and the teachers in our community are doing in order to solicit for funds for the project. Right, so again, they wrote letters and asked for support and small donations. They also set up their small nursery, tree nursery, to start gaining or raising some startup capital to kick a start with the center. They, this big idea of providing multi-services at the Center for Sustainable Development and Action. 
That's another example. Um, the last one you might be familiar with if you've been joining us on the previous webinars. This is coming from Santa Maria International School in India, where the students, what they did with the pandemic was set up a podcast business. And this is a great example, again, on today's webinar, because mainly it's about starting up a business with zero startup cost. So they have shown that this is possible, actually, through this example, and there were zero cost involved in starting the business, meaning that all the income was profit. So the students use their own creativity, available resources, and some free services such as Zoom and other platforms um, that they adapted entirely to the pandemic and they adapted the business, sorry, entirely to the pandemic. And this is kind of an inspiration to everyone because they managed to make just in one and a half month, $53 out of their sponsors. So again, another great example of businesses that you can set up with zero startup costs. Great, so as we usually do, I'm going to briefly recap on what we covered today so far before we move into a short group activity. So we said at the beginning that the startup capital is the money needed to set up a new business that is also known as seed money. Let me just, ah, there we are. Um, and as we've seen today, there are plenty of creative ways in which you can raise the startup capital you need or might not need, who knows, to launch your business. And I think Cynthia touched on something that we wanted to share with you as well today, which is a resource assessment. So a resource assessment is mainly a table that allows you to identify the resources and skills that your school already has. It's in terms of the skills that you as a teacher or your students might have, physical resources, land could be, or equipment, or natural resources available. We, we said before, you can grow things on the school ground. So things that are available already to you at your school, so you don't need to buy things to start with a business. So this, again, is another source to think about ideas uh, to some businesses with little money or no money at all, and yet or instead with what you have available. So if you'd like to learn more about the resource assessment, what is it or how to do it, everything is explained in detail on our School Enterprise Challenge Business Guide number two. So here on the screen, you can see an extract of that table, which is really easy and pretty straightforward to fill in. Great, so let's... Um, move on to the group activity now. I'm checking the time, we are still okay. So it's time for you to get your heads together and learn from each other from the experience today. So I'm going to be putting you in a small breakout rooms shortly to do a reflection activity. So you can connect and share your takeaways with some of other teachers present today on this session. So as we usually do, I'm going to quickly explain how breakout rooms work in Zoom. So you'll be assigned to a breakout room automatically and you'll be moved there and brought back to the main room automatically. So you don't need to worry about clicking anything. In the breakout room, do remember please to click on the microphone icon to unmute yourself and be part of a discussion and you're welcome to also click on the camera so you can turn your video on and, and get the conversation live with your peers. Remember that there are a few buttons on the screen that are available to you. One is ask for help and invite host. And please do that if you require our help, but only if you need us to solve any issue or sort anything out for you. Otherwise, we wouldn't like to be jumping and interrupting your conversation. Remember what we said at the beginning, this is an interactive session and your participation via the chat and in the group activities will make all the difference. So this is a chance for you to get to chat with your colleagues around the world. So please don't miss it. 
Having said that, let's have a look at what we'll do. So we'll have, or you'll have 10 minutes in your small group to think about these reflection questions. So if you're already running a school business, what one action will you take away from today's session that will help your school business make a success or a bigger success? Because I'm sure some of you are already running pretty successful school businesses. So what action will you take away from today's session that will contribute to the success of your school business? And if you haven't run your school business or school business yet, what inspire you most from today's session? And again, this is a mix and match, right? Even if you are already running a business, you are welcome to share what inspired you most from today's session. So as I said, we are going to have 10 minutes. Let me quickly do the math in terms of how many people we have here today. So I'm going to set up the breakout rooms uh, while I'm saying that. And we said it's going to be 10 minutes. Right, so there we are, there we go. If there are no further questions, I'm going to open the breakout rooms and I'll see you back again in the main room in 10 minutes. Awesome, off you go. Okay, I can see all the numbers creeping in already and most of you are already back. So welcome back everyone. And I hope that those 10 minutes together help you bounce ideas or share some inspiration from today and takeaways. Um, so as always, you're welcome to share in the chat any insights or anything that came from your conversations, any learning, any takeaway that you'd like to share with us. It's always welcome. This is a space for you. And as we said at the beginning is to make the, mes the most uh, of our time together, right? And especially with your colleagues around the world. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to share in the chat, any inspiration, any action, any insight, anything that you learn from today's session, anything that um, struck you in terms of how simple things might be. And, or things that we haven't thought of before, maybe it's sparking, sparking, sorry, one idea on things that you could do now with your students while running or about to set up your school business. While you think about all that, and because I like to be respectful of the time, as we usually are, I'm going to move on to on our presentation, but please do share in the chat any insight, anything that by you today, any takeaway. So just a quick recap, as we have this video at the beginning, our School Enterprise Challenge is our award-winning experiential learning program, which will guide you as a teacher with your students to come up with an, an innovative and exciting business idea, create a business plan, and actually launch and run your school business. So we were saying before, it's an experience for you and your students and the, while they become young entrepreneurs, selling real products or services to real people and running real businesses. So our educational resources will guide you through all the way in the journey. So you don't need to worry about that. And templates and resources are being shared as soon as you register to the program. So I'm sharing again the website for you to have a look if you haven't registered yet. And of course, to find out more details about the program. So um, this one is a slide for you to get connected with us. This is still another webinar to go this year and that's really, really exciting for us. So as I said before, we are running the same session on Thursday, 3.30 UK time. But then in two weeks time, we'll meet again for another webinar in the series. So as we usually promised at the beginning, and this is the time now to share the link for you to download your certificate of attendance by filling in this short survey. So I'm going to share it now on the link and probably Sina will do the same shortly. So, you know, your feedback is very important to help us develop future webinars, which are of interest and useful to you. 
So please make sure to allow five minutes max to fill in the survey and download your certificate of attendance. So if there's nothing else to add, no questions, no insights, that will be it for today. So we hope you enjoyed today's webinar and found it useful and again, spark some ideas on ways in which you can get started with your students with what you have available and without worrying about the money. The money will come and there are so many ideas that you can try, test and see how it goes in terms of raising the little money that you might need. You might not need any money at all. So that's a good way to start. This was uh, webinar number 11 in our brand new series. And I was saying before, in two weeks time, we look forward to seeing you again for a Q&A on preparing your school environment for your business. So that will happen on Tuesday, the 12th of October at 2 p.m. British summer time. And again on Thursday, 14th of October at 3.30 British summer time. And as we usually do, you can find the links to register to those sessions on all our social media channels. So please do stay connected with us so you can join us in two weeks time. So that might be it for today then. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Cynthia, for sharing your experience and inspiration, bringing the element of inspiration on today's session. And thank you, Sinat and Nonto for joining me today as well. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to check the chat. If there are any further questions or comments that you'd like to share. Otherwise, please do remember to click on the survey, complete it, and download your certificate of attendance. And we look forward to seeing you again in two weeks' time. Thank you very much.